EAKs. Challenge everything. If Harry Potter goes back to Hogwarts, he will be in mortal danger. Wrong! No! <laughs> Wait! Wait for me! Come on, Ron! Harry! Wrong! Borrow, Harry. Did any of you ever give a thought of how worried I'd be? Beds but, but... empty, no note, car gone. Oh, Mom, I... out of my mind with worry. Did you care? Never. As long as I've lived. But Mom, now get outside and start denoming. I've had it up to here with all of you, except you, of course, Harry. I'm not cross with you. You ready to do a bit of denoming then, Harry? Well, I'm not sure, Ron. I've been with Dursley so much this summer, I'm a little rusty. That was truly smashing, Harry. Oh, oh. you know, Harry, you can cast Flipendo on a whole bunch of things lying around the bar. And if you do, you might be surprised at what you find. <laughs> there are gnomes everywhere. Look, <laughs> they're up in the rafters. Okay, Harry, target the little pests and flipendo them off the rafter. That was pretty good, Harry. You've got the little pests on the run. Harry, we'd like you to meet our washing machine. Huh? Dad tried charming it. Now it's anything but charming. <sighs> this is a good opportunity to practice some dueling. Dueling? And keep moving round it in class for Pender when the door is open. That sorted it, Harry. I'd love to see that in our Petunia's kitchen. You look like you need a chocolate frog. Here you go. You have to knock the frog out before you can catch it. Right, let's go throw some gnomes. We need to get a move on with the denoming. Mum will go mad if she finds any gnomes left in the garden. Look, there's one over there. What you have to do is flipendo them until they're dazed and confused. Wow, I've got to try this. Then you grab hold of them and spin them round. <laughs> and chuck them out of the garden. Nice one, Fred. That went miles. Day tomorrow, Diagon Alley, then Platform Nine and Three Quarters. For someone who's never denomed before, you've done an excellent job, Harry. Almost as good as Gilderoy Lockhart himself. Thanks, Mrs. Weasley. Mrs. Weasley woke them all early the following Wednesday. She took a flower pot off the kitchen mantelpiece, and everyone grabbed a handful of flu powder. Harry had never travelled by flu powder before, and when he scattered the powder into the fireplace, he immediately swallowed a lot of hot ash. <coughs> Diagon Alley! It felt as though he was being sucked down a giant plug hole. Harry tried to keep his eyes open, but the whirling made him feel sick. He closed his eyes, wishing it would stop, and then he fell.
This doesn't look like Diagon Alley. It's Lucius and Draco Malfoy. Touch nothing, Draco. Ah, Mr. Borgin. Mr. Malfoy, what a pleasure to see you again. The Ministry of Magic is conducting more raids, and I have a few more uh, items like this at home that might embarrass me. Items that you are willing to sell. Correct. I'll expect you tomorrow at the manor to pick them up. Good day. Good day, Mr. Malfoy. Uses to find my way out. Uh oh, imp. I better watch out. Hedwig. Harry! Harry, we hoped you'd only gone one far place too far. I was frantic with worry. What's wrong, Ginny? You don't look very happy. The flu powder went wrong, and I dropped all my things in the fireplace as I passed. Would you like me to go and look for them? That's so kind of you, Harry, but I think you'll need to get your things first. What was on your school list? A copy of the Standard Book of Spells, Grade 2 from Flourish and Blots, and a new potion bar from Mole Peppers. Well, let's all go to Flourish and Blots then. Oh, and you might need this. It fell into the hearth when you used the flu powder. A silver sickle. <laughs> Thanks, Mrs. Weasley. Come on, Harry. Let's go to Flourish and Blots. I'd like to buy that, please. The Standard Book of Spells, Grade 2, by Miranda Goshawk. Ah, now that would be one sickle. Thank you. With the knowledge contained in this book, you'll be able to cast more powerful spells. Here's a helpful hint from the book, just for you. Build up the power on your wand and cast it when the spell is ready. But be careful. Don't overpower your spells or you could end up in a spot of trouble. Thanks very much. Well, Harry, did you get your book? Yes, Mrs Weasley. I can't wait to try out what I've learned. Where did you lose your things, Ginny? I think I dropped my brass scales when I passed the fireplace in the magical menagerie. My new quill definitely fell into the back of Gamble and Japes. And I'm sure I saw Hagrid when I lost my speller tape, so I think that must be in the Leaky Cauldron. Hmm. Magical Menagerie, Gamble and Japes and the Leaky Cauldron. Gossip. We really appreciate this, Harry. It is so kind of you to do this for Ginny. Yes, Harry. Thanks so much. Now go on, show us what you can do with your new spells. Bet you can smash those barrels over there. Didn't you hear me, boy? I said it. We're closed now. Go away. I don't know kids today. If I'm careful, I should be able to creep past him. Ginny Brass Scale! I know you're here somewhere. 
I wonder if the noise of a spell might distract him. Ginny? Oh, Harry, you're so wonderful. No, really. It was nothing. You're such a kind boy, Harry. You really deserve a famous witches and wizards card. Thanks, Mrs. Weasley. Gilderoy Lockhart signing copies of his latest book in Flourish and Blots. We were thinking of going in to see him. Would you like to come with us, Harry? Oh, uh, well, okay then. Thanks. Great Scott! Is that... It is. It's Harry Potter! Ladies and gentlemen, this is the perfect moment for me to make an important announcement. I have great pleasure in announcing that this term I will be taking up the post of Defence Against the Dark Arts teacher at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft <laughs> and Wizardry. Bet you loved that, didn't you, Potter? Famous Harry Potter. Leave him alone. He didn't want all that. Potter, you've got yourself a girlfriend. I suppose your parents will go hungry for a month to pay for all the books you're going to need at Hogwarts. Here, girl, take this one. It's the least I can do to help out the poor and needy. Let me give you some coaching, Harry. Fame is a fickle friend, and I would encourage you to be careful how you play the fame game, so to speak. Be sparing with your public appearances at first, and watch the company you keep. Harry! Well, Harry! I remember the time the when train. I was my second the best train? Sir, Daddy yes. Cools. The Hogwarts Express I believe the more left five minutes ago. Oh, no! The what are we going to do? Well, <laughs> Trouble I know that Dad took the flying car to work this morning. It's marked in Charon Cross Road. It's mysteriously missing for three weeks. Subsequently okay. leaking it's the story only to profit that I've been captured by time. Time. trolls in the wild of Stocks and Tees that I managed to regain my former prominent position as the world's most popular wizard. Harry? Oh. I'll meet you in the courtyard outside the leaky cauldron. Ready to go to Hogwarts, Harry? Look, Harry! There's Hogwarts straight ahead! Appreciated. Oh, it was nothing. Anyway, we better get a move on. We don't want Professor Snape catching us out so late. The only thing I'm not looking forward to this time is seeing Snape. Let's just hope he's left because he missed out on the Defence Against the Dark Arts job again. Or he might have been sacked. 
I mean, everyone hates him. Or maybe he's waiting to hear why you two didn't arrive on the Hogwarts Express. Professor Snape, we, uh, we were... In my search of the grounds, I noticed that considerable damage seems to have been done to a very valuable Whomping Willow. I will be speaking with Professor McGonagall later. That tree did more damage to us than we... Silence! I would advise you both to make your way immediately to the Gryffindor common room. But Professor Snape, we... Go, and count yourselves lucky. If I should catch either of you out after tonight, I will definitely deduct house points. Come on, Harry. I'll meet you outside the entrance hall. Why, if it isn't young Potter, how are you? Glad to be back at Hogwarts? Well, I would be, Nick, if Professor Snape hadn't caught me outside. Well, I suppose that rules are there for a reason, although sometimes the reason escapes me. Yes, you shouldn't be up this late, you know. Better get back to the Gryffindor common room before Professor Snape catches you again. Goodbye. Bye, Nick. Okay, let's go to the seventh floor. I can't get into the common room, Harry. She wants the password. Of course I want the password. How am I to know that you two aren't Slytherins disguised as Gryffindors? Because we don't look like gorillas, that's how. There you are. Someone said you'd been expelled for crashing a flying car into the Whomping Willow. Well, we haven't been expelled. Look, just tell us the new password, Hermione. Oh, very well then. It's Wattlebird. Hey Harry, Fred and George have set up a shop. You can trade all kinds of things with them for spells and really wicked stuff. Wow, I must go and see them. Where are they? Go through that door and through the reading room. There's a portrait on the other side. What's the password? Liberty Gibbet. Oh, and uh, watch out for Percy. He hates being disturbed when he's studying. I'll meet you in the common room later. Ah, Potter. You finally made it then. Heard about the Ford Anglia. Mum's going to kill Ron when she finds out. I bet it was worth it to see Snape's face when you landed. Um, sort of. Anyway, welcome to our shop, Harry. Yes. Feel free to browse our extensive range of wizard wheezes and magical merchandise. Everything priced at reasonable rates and the only currency universally accepted throughout Hogwarts. 30 bots, every flavour beads. We're sure there's something here you'll like. Okay, Harry. It's been a long day. I'm really tired and I'm off to bed. Morning, Ron. Do you know what class we've got first? I heard that it's flying. You heard right. I'll meet you downstairs in the entrance hall. Hello, Nick. What's the matter? Ah, uh, a matter of no importance. It's just that Sir Properly Decapitated Podmore won't let me join the Headless Hunt. Apparently, they only accept huntsmen whose heads have completely parted company with their bodies. I'm sorry to hear that. Not to worry, young Potter. As I said, it's a matter of no importance. Welcome to Second Year Flying. Although you all apparently learned to fly last year, the apparently is directed at you, Mr. Longbottom. A refresher course is in order. Mr. Potter, would you please come over here so we can run through the basics? Please, will you fly up slowly? A good start. Now return to hover above the ground again. Good. At least you have broom control, however basic. Let's try something a little more difficult. I assume you can see the magical rings. Kindly fly through them all for me. 
Well done, Potter. I think you're ready to take this year's flying exam. You have approximately two and a half minutes to fly through as many rings as you can. Your course through the rings will get progressively more difficult, and only the most expert flyers ever manage to complete it. Congratulations, Mr. Potter. A truly outstanding performance. You really are one of the most talented flyers I have ever seen, and you deserve the highest grade, a distinction. That was exhausting, Harry. I'm off to bed. See you later. Harry, just the person I've been looking for. Something dreadful has happened to Neville. He's got himself trapped behind a tapestry. And I suppose you want me to get him out? Would you? That's so kind of you, Harry. He's out here. Neville? How did you end up back there? He was looking for Trevor, his toad, and he went the wrong way. Now he's stuck. Well, can't you get him out, Hermione? No, I've tried everything. We need a severing charm. And where am I going to find one of those at this time of night? Herbology Greenhouse 3 in the grounds. Except, to get in, you're going to have to find out how to pull up cork plants. If you go to the library, there's an excellent book by Professor Lockhart. That'll tell you how to do it. OK, so I've got to go into the library on the second floor and get a copy of Lockhart's book, and then go out into the grounds and find my way into the Herbology Greenhouse to get the severing charm. Oh, no! Mr. Potter, what on earth is... Oh! What's happened here? I don't know. I found him like this. Follow me, Potter. Professor, I swear I didn't! Harry was taken to Professor Dumbledore's office, where he came across the sorting hat. You've been wondering whether I put you in the right house. Yes, well, you were particularly difficult to place. But I stand by what I said before. You would have done well in Slytherin. And he also discovered Forks, Professor Dumbledore's pet phoenix. Fascinating creatures, phoenixes. They can carry immensely heavy loads. Their tears have healing powers, and they make highly faithful pets. And, of course, Professor Dumbledore himself. I know you're not the attacker, Harry, but I must ask you whether there is anything you'd like to tell me. Come. Come to me. Let me rip you. Let me tear you. Anything at all? No, there isn't anything, Professor. Very well, if you're sure. Good night, Harry. Night, Professor. Phew. Thanks, Harry. I thought I was never going to get out of there. Nice one, Harry. Well, all this excitement has worn me out. I think I'll head off to bed. But Hermione, nearly had this nick has been attacked and I... Oh, I'll tell you in the morning. Hello, Hermione. Do you know what lesson we've got first thing? It's defence against the dark arts, Harry, with Gilderoy Lockhart. I can't wait. Hmm, me neither. I'll meet you on the third floor outside the defence against the dark arts class. Can everyone see me? Can you all hear me? Excellent! This term I shall be teaching dueling. Let me introduce you to my assistant, Professor Snape. Now, Harry Potter, if you'd like to come forward, the Expelliarmus spell challenge is through here. What you have to do is to find the Expelliarmus spellbook somewhere beyond the portrait. Once you have the spellbook in your possession, the Expelliarmus spell will be yours to use as you see fit.
Well done, Potter. Forty house points for Gryffindor. Now I'd like you to use the Expelliarmus spell you've just acquired in a real duel. Mr. Malfoy, come over here. Let's see what you can make of the famous Potter. First duelist to gain five points wins the duel. Cross the line and you lose a point. Very well then. One's at the ready. When I count to three... Scared, Potter! You wish! One, two, three! Serpent Sortia! Mouth, Harry. Why didn't you tell us? I'm a what? A parcel mouth. You can talk to snakes. So, does it matter? It matters, Harry, because being able to talk to snakes was what Salazar Slytherin was famous for. That's why the symbol of Slytherin House is a serpent. Now the whole school's going to think you're his great, 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 great grandson or something. But I'm not. You'll find that hard to prove. He lived about a thousand years ago. For all we know, you could be. Anyway, we've got Quidditch practice next at the Quidditch Stadium. I'll meet you in the entrance hall, Harry. Ah, Potter. Ready to continue our winning streak from last year. I'm certain we're good enough, but we're definitely going to have to practice a lot harder. No time like the present, so let's have a run-through of the basics. When you fly through a ring, it adds to your broom's magical charge and increases its speed. Likewise, missing a ring decreases the charge. These are bludgers, nasty pieces of work, as you remember from last year. You don't want to get hit by a bludger avoid it. Great going, Potter. Now grab the snitch. Looks like you've improved on last year, Potter. With this lineup, Gryffindor are a dead cert for the Quidditch Cup again. That'll really get up Snape's nose. As Hufflepuff are in training as well, they've agreed to take part in a practice game with us. You'll have to compete against their seeker now, but I'm sure that'll be no problem for you, Potter. Incredible flying, Potter. Even Madam Hooch would have to give you a good grade. Don't let Professor McGonagall find out, but here, take this broom and get in as much practice as you can. Yeah! Hello there, Hermione. What's the matter? Malfoy showed up while you were practicing in the Quidditch Stadium. He's been made seeker after his dad brought his way onto the team with a whole set of Nimbus 2001s. Hermione said something about it and he called her a filthy mudblood. A what? A mudblood? It's a really disgusting name for someone who was born of non-magical parents. There are some wizards, like Malfoy's family, who think they're better than everyone else. Anyway, it's a horrible thing to say. If it hadn't been for Hagrid showing up, I'd have cursed him. He's not worth the trouble, Ron. Uh, I suppose you're right. Anyway, I'm tired and I'm off to bed. Let's go. I think it might be a good idea to go to the library and find a copy of Hogwarts A History. Why do you want it? So we can find out about the legend of the Chamber of Secrets, of course. Of course. I suppose you want me to sneak out to the library again. Could you? Oh, thanks, Harry. The only thing is, you'll need to get into the restricted section this time. Go down to the second floor and into the library reading room. Sneak through there and you'll see a door with the golden arch. Go through this door and into the reading room annex. At the end of the annex, there's a portrait that will let you into the restricted section. The password is Bibliophile.
Right, second floor, reading room, through door with golden arch and into annex, through portrait. Got it. Thanks, Harry. Uh, and watch out for the prefect. Looking for some fresh victims? Or is he running an errand for that mudblood Granger? Whatever it is, Crab, I think it's time to teach him a lesson. Done. No! Harry! I managed to get Hogwarts a history, but it wasn't easy. Slytherin ambushed me. Crikey! Can I have a look at the book, Harry? Here you go. Here it is. I'll read the passage out. Hogwarts was founded over a thousand years ago by the four greatest witches and wizards of the age. Godric Gryffindor, Helga Hufflepuff, Rowena Ravenclaw and Salazar Slytherin. For a while, the four founders worked in harmony together, seeking out youngsters with magical abilities and bringing them to the castle to be educated. But a rift began to grow between Slytherin and the others. Slytherin believed that magical learning should be restricted to all magic families and that no students of non-magical parentage should be admitted. Eventually, a serious argument on the subject caused Slytherin to leave the school. He built a secret chamber in the castle of which the other founders knew nothing. According to the legend, Slytherin sealed this chamber of secrets so that no one would be able to open it until his own true heir arrived at the school. The heir alone would be able to unseal the chamber unleash the horror within, and use it to purge the school of all who are unworthy to study magic. Blimey! I always knew Salazar Slytherin was a twisted old loony, but I never knew he'd started all this pure blood mudblood stuff. It sounds to me like the horror within mentioned in the book is a monster that only the heir of Slytherin can control. But what kind of monster? The kind of monster that can petrify a ghost? All this talk of monsters has given me the creeps. I'm off to bed. Morning, Ron. It's Transfiguration first thing, isn't it? Yeah, first floor. I'll meet you there. Good morning. Today we shall learn the transfiguration spell known as Avifors. Avifors will allow you to transform small objects, such as the parts of this statue, into birds. This is achieved like so. Avifors! You will now see that a crawl space has been revealed in the wall. Beyond this is the Avifor's challenge. Mr. Potter, come forward, please. Yes, Professor? 
The Abathor spellbook is located on the other side of this crawl space. Find it, and the spell will be yours. You must then return here to the classroom. Yes, Professor. Off you go. Superb job, Potter. Forty house points for Gryffindor. That is all for today. Class dismissed. Nice one, Harry. You did well there. Uh, and good luck with the Quidditch match. Quidditch match? Yeah, against Hufflepuff. Remember? Come on, let's get to the stadium. You can't be late for the first game of the season. Welcome to the Quidditch Stadium, and a match that should prove to be an absolute belter. Hufflepuff versus Gryffindor! Hufflepuff oh, by Johnson there. Gryffindor have won! Hufflepuff will really be kicking themselves after that performance. Harry, I suppose you're worn out after that. I am. I'm going to bed. You're not going to believe this, Harry. Hermione wants you to meet her in the girls' bathroom on the second floor. She says she's got a plan to find out who the heir of Slytherin is. Really? Yes. Now hurry up. Girls' bathroom, second floor. Isn't that supposed to be haunted? Hermione? This is a girl's bathroom. He's not a girl. No, sorry Myrtle. I just wanted to show him how uh, nice it is in here. I wish people would stop interrupting my peace and quiet. I do have feelings, you know, even if I am dead. So what's this plan of yours, Hermione? We need to find out who the heir of Slytherin is, so we can discover who wants all the students with non-magical parents out of Hogwarts. Well, it's not me, I hope. Do you think it could be Draco? Well, if it is, how do we prove it? One of us needs to get Malfoy to answer a few questions without him realising it's us. That's what I was thinking, which is why I've been making a Polyjuice Potion. What's Polyjuice Potion? It transforms you into somebody else. One of us could change into a Slytherin, and Malfoy would probably tell us anything we wanted to know. I managed to sneak a bit of Goyle's hair during Transfiguration class and mix it into this. One sip, Harry, and you'll look just like Goyle. about the dungeons this time of night. You know, Goyle, I'm surprised the Daily Prophet hasn't reported what's going on here. I suppose Dumbledore's trying to hush it all up. He'll be sacked if it doesn't stop soon. Father's always said old Dumbledore's the worst thing that ever happened to Hogwarts. He loves that non-magical lot. A decent headmaster would never have let that jumped up Granger mudblood in. And as for St. Potter, the mudblood's friend, 
He's another one with no proper wizard feeling. And people think he's the Slytherin heir. I wish I knew who it is. I could help them. Oh, uh, you must have some idea who's behind it all. You know I haven't, Goyle. How many times do I have to tell you? But I know one thing. Last time the Chamber of Secrets was opened, a mudblood girl died. So I bet it's only a matter of time before one of them's killed this time. I hope it's Granger. Anyway, uh, Draco, I'd best be going. Going where? Uh, to the hospital wing. Yes, that's it, the hospital wing. I've got a stomachache and I need to get something for it. Get going, Goyle, before your fat belly explodes! I'd better get out of here, and fast. Well? It isn't him! Malfoy's not the heir of Slytherin! Oh, but he must be! Who else could it be? I don't know, but it's got to be someone who was here at Hogwarts 50 years ago, when the chamber was last opened. Well done, Harry. You did a great job. See you in the morning. Night, Harry. Hello, Ron. What class have we got first today? It's Charms with Flitwick. I'll meet you on the second floor. Good morning, class. Today's lesson will most assuredly involve us in learning how to cast the appositely named Bluebell Flames. The proper incantation for this charm is Incendio. You will now see that a crawl space has been revealed in the wall. Beyond this is the Incendio Challenge. Mr Potter, if you wouldn't mind coming forward, please. The Incendio Spellbook is located on the other side of the crawl space. Once you've managed to collect it, the Incendio Charm will be yours. You must then return here to the classroom. Do you understand, Mr Potter? I do, Professor. Very well then, off you jolly well go! Excellent, Potter. 40 house points to Gryffindor. That is all for today. Class dismissed. Hey, Harry. Don't forget you've got the Quidditch match against Ravenclaw. Come on, let's go to the stadium. Welcome to what should be a really cracking match. Ravenclaw versus Gryffindor. What a match! Those Ravenclaws didn't know what hit them. Anyway, I don't know about you, but I'm worn out just from cheering. I'm going to bed. Hey, Harry! What do you think of this? It looks like an old diary. Belong to T.M. Riddle. Hang on. I know that name. 
T.M. Riddle got an award for special services for the school 50 years ago. I know that because Filch made me polish his shield about 50 times in detention. Well, whoever he was, he didn't write in it. It's completely blank. I wonder why someone wanted to try and get rid of it then. Weird. Harry went to bed before anyone else in his dormitory that night, mainly because he wanted to examine Riddle's diary. He sat on his four-poster and flicked through the blank pages, until... Hello, Harry Potter. My name is Tom Riddle. I'm at Hogwarts and horrible stuff's been happening. Do you know about the Chamber of Secrets? Of course I know about the Chamber of Secrets. In my fifth year, the chamber was opened and the monster killed a girl. I caught the person who'd opened the chamber and he was expelled. I can show you if you like. I can take you inside my memory of the night when I caught him. Okay. Harry sat entranced by the memory Tom Riddle showed him. Evening, Hagrid. What are you doing down here, Tom? It's all over. I don't think you meant to kill anyone. But monsters don't make good pets now, do they? It never killed no one! Come on. The least Hogwarts can do is make sure the thing that killed that girl is slaughtered. It wasn't him. He wouldn't. He never. I... No! It was Hagrid, Ron. Hagrid opened the Chamber of Secrets 50 years ago. Go tell Hermione. I've got to go and see Hagrid. Bad business, Hagrid. A very bad business indeed. Things have gone far enough. As chairman of the school governors, I've simply got to act and send you away. Away? Away to where? No, not the wizard prison. Not Azkaban. I'm afraid so. A dreadful thing, Dumbledore. As of this moment, you are suspended as headmaster of Hogwarts. If the governors want my room, I shall, of course, step aside. No! However, you will find that I will only truly have left this school when none here are loyal to me. You will also find that help will always be given at Hogwarts to those who ask for it. Of course, if anyone were you to find out some stuff, all they'd have to do would be to follow the spiders. That'll lead them, right? That's the key to the whole thing. And that's all I'm saying. Come along now, Hagrid. We don't want to keep the Dementors waiting now, do we? All right, I'm coming. Is it Hagrid? Not exactly, but I'm a friend of Hagrid's. Hagrid has never sent men into a hollow before. Hagrid's in trouble. That's why I've come. In trouble? They think up at the school that Hagrid's been setting a... a something on students. They've taken him to Azkaban. But that was years ago. Everyone thought that I was the monster that dwells in the Chamber of Secrets. They thought Hagrid had opened the chamber and set me free, which was why he was expelled from Hogwarts. So you didn't come from the Chamber of Secrets? No, I come from a distant land and Hagrid cared for me. The girl who was killed 50 years ago who was discovered in a bathroom and I have not seen any other castle apart from the cupboard I grew up in. If it wasn't you who killed that girl, then what did kill her? We shall not speak of it. I'll just go then. Go! I think not. But, but... I cannot deny my children fresh meat.
have slept in. Oh no, the Quidditch match. I need to go to the Quidditch stadium. Hi Harry, big match against Slytherin today. I'm glad it's you that's doing it. After all that flying about and what we found out last night, I can't think straight. Me neither. We can't tell anyone about the diary. And I don't want to be the one who brings up why Hagrid was expelled 50 years ago. And then there's... Kill this time. Let me rip. Tear. The voice. I just heard it again. Didn't you? Harry, I think I've just understood something. I've got to go to the library. What does she understand? Loads more than I do. But why she got to go to the library? Because that's what Hermione does. When in doubt, go to the library. Anyway, Harry, you'd better get moving. The match! Today we see Gryffindor playing against Slytherin in a match that will surely decide the winner of this year's House Cup. Got there by Gryffindor wins! I don't think anyone in Gryffindor will ever forget that performance. It is with great pleasure that I present the Quidditch Cup to Gryffindor. Harry, that was wicked! Oh, it's such a pity Hermione didn't get to see it. What? Hermione wasn't at the match. No, I haven't seen her since she ran off this morning. I don't know. She's probably got her head stuck in a book somewhere. Anyway, I'm worn out. I'm off to bed. Where were you, Ron? I'd been to McGonagall's office, and then I had to go to the infirmary. What? McGonagall told me that Ginny's gone missing. They can't find her anywhere. Oh, no! And it gets worse. It's Hermione. She was attacked. She's been petrified. Huh? They found her just like nearly headless Nick, outside moaning myrtles. Steph is aboard! McGonagall told me that they were doing everything they could to find Ginny. So, I went to the infirmary to see Hermione. I found a piece of paper in her hand. A page torn from an old library book. That must have been what she was doing before she was attacked. What was the page about? It was all about basilisks. They're giant snakes that live for hundreds of years. Apparently, a basilisk can kill people by just staring at them. Anything else? Yeah, spiders don't like them. They run away when a basilisk is near. And there was something else. Hermione had written the word pipes on the page. Pipes? Pipes? That's all, just pipes. Ron! This is it! This is the answer! The monster in the Chamber of Secrets is a basilisk! A giant snake! That's why I've been hearing the voice and nobody else has heard it. It's because I understand parcel tongue. Harry, do you think Ginny might be in the Chamber of Secrets along with that flipping big snake? McGonagall said they searched everywhere in the castle, but no one knows where the chamber is. We've got to find her. OK, so what we need to know is how the basilisk's been getting round the place. A giant snake. Surely someone would have seen it. Pipes! Pipes, Ron! It's been using the plumbing. I've been hearing the voice inside the walls. The entrance to the Chamber of Secrets. What if it's a bathroom? What if it's in Moaning Myrtle's bathroom? OK, so what do we do? The place is crawling with prefects looking for Ginny. 
I'll go first. You join me in moaning myrtles on the second floor. Oh, it's you, Harry Potter. What do you want this time? To ask how you died. Oh, it was dreadful. It happened right here. I did it because Olive Hornby was teasing me about my glasses. I was crying when I heard someone come in. It was a boy, and he began speaking a different language. I went to tell him to go to use his own bathroom, and then I died. But how? I just remember seeing these great big eyes. Where exactly did you see the eyes? Over there, by the sinks. Harry, say something. Something in parcel tongue. But go on, Harry. Okay then. Uh, open up. English. She won't wake. She's still alive, but only just. Tom? Tom Riddle? You've got to help me, Tom. We've got to get her out of here. There's a basilisk and it could be along at any moment. The basilisk won't come until it's called. Let me tell you about the real reason Ginny's like this. She's been writing in the diary. My diary for months. I grew stronger and stronger on a diet of her deepest fears until I had enough power to start pouring a little of my soul back into her. What do you mean? Ginny Weasley opened the Chamber of Secrets. She daubed threatening messages on the walls and set the Serpent of Slytherin on the mudbloods and nearly headless Nick. No! I'm afraid so. Ginny told me all about you, Harry. So I decided to show you my famous capture of that great oaf Hagrid to gain your trust. You framed Hagrid! Yes. But you, Harry Potter, how is it that you managed to defeat the greatest wizard of all time? Why do you care? Haven't you realised yet? I am Lord Voldemort, the greatest sorcerer in the world! Sorry to disappoint you in all that, but the greatest sorcerer in the world is Albus Dumbledore. Dumbledore's been driven out of Hogwarts by the mere memory of me. He's not as gone as you might think! To business, Harry. I'm going to teach you a little lesson. Let's match the powers of Lord Voldemort, heir of Salazar Slytherin, against the famous Harry Potter. A lot better now, thanks. 
I'm really disappointed. With all that's happened, Professor McGonagall has cancelled this year's exams. I was really looking forward to doing all of that revision. As you can see, Harry, Hermione's made a complete recovery. Anyway, did you know that the House Cup is about to be awarded? The presentation's in the Great Hall. Yeah, I hope we've got enough house points to beat Slytherin. I'd really love to see Malfoy's face if we managed to do it two years in a row. Well, when you're ready, Harry, we'll go in. We come to the end of another most eventful year at Hogwarts. And so, for their many achievements and outstanding commitment to the school, it is with great pleasure that I present the House Cup to Gryffindor. Harry told them everything. For nearly a quarter of an hour, he spoke into the rapt silence. He told them about hearing the disembodied voice, how Hermione had finally realized that he was hearing a basilisk in the pipes, how he and Ron, following a hint from Hagrid, had followed the spiders into the forest, that Aragog had told them where the last victim of the basilisk, 50 years before, had died how he had guessed that Moaning Myrtle had been the victim, and that the entrance to the Basilisk's lair, the Chamber of Secrets, might be in her bathroom. But how did you all get out of there alive? Well, it all had to do with loyalty and friendship. And courage. <laughs> Harry, you can't forget that. Yes, and courage too. Professor Dumbledore explained that 50 years ago, Lord Voldemort, as the 16-year-old Tom Riddle, had enchanted his diary, and that diary had enchanted Ginny. For it was Lucius Malfoy who had planted Tom Riddle's diary on the hapless Ginny Weasley. And as for Harry, well, once again, he truly was the boy who lived.